Guys and ground folks, it is another Friday. Guys, I'm on the way to uh, heat maintenance. I think I made a few vlogs already here before in the past. We recently installed a mini split unit at this customer's house this past summer, but she has a steam boiler there as well. And I made a note to follow up with her because guys, it's a, it's a pretty interesting setup. Um, she of course has the mini split units there for AC. She uses the um, she uses the steam boiler for heating when it gets real cold. But what she said she's going to do is she uses like the um, mini split units. You know, mini split units are heat pumps as well. But she said that she she uses the heat pumps for heat, like on mild days, really like to take the, take the chill off. But she still uses the heat, um, the steam boiler that's there. So I'm on the way there now, guys. I gotta find parking. And we're gonna take a look once we get inside. So I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. All right, guys. If you were here with me this past summer, I think the fuse popped in that mini split unit. It was just a random occurrence, but everything's rocking and rolling with the mini split units. I believe the last time we came out here, we checked all the filters, everything is still clean. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you the steam boiler. Where's the light switch? Oh, this is a pull down screen. You know what? So be it. If I can't find this light, I get a headlight here. All right, guys. But this is the steam boiler, and. Looks like well McLean, 100,000 BTU. And I see the automatic water feeder here. And guys, I turned this on and I turned it off. I didn't want to heat the house up too warm. Like right now is where it's like already, it was 40 degrees last night and it's going to be, it's going to get up to 70 today. So, and I think right now she has one of those mini split units already heating. So, doesn't look like she's gonna need this boiler. Probably not for another month, but as you see here, we got our sight glass. And what I'm gonna do, let me pull up a chair. And I can tell the water is clean, but what you see here is just dirt that's on the inside of the side glass but what i want to do here i don't like seeing that the psi should be at zero what i want to do is i'm going to take this pressure stroll off and i'm going to clean this pigtail out and while i'm at it i'm going to drain this boiler down and try to get at least some of the knock out And right now I got the power off, so my water feeder is not gonna try to refill this boiler while I'm doing this. And you see that there? The water level is almost down, but that is 100% just a dirty sight glass. But let me empty this out. And I gotta get my screwdriver to take the wires off this pressure troll. And let's get busy. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. After a few buckets, we got our water to stop. This thing is empty. And once again, we got our boiler off. We don't want to start this boiler. Well, it shouldn't start anyway with no water. Our low water cutoff should turn it off. But make sure the power is off because we don't want this water feeder to add water to the boiler while you're still servicing it. But, all right guys, taking our side glass out. Shit, I gotta run this through some water here. I don't think this side glass is ever clean. Look at that. All right, while I got this out, I'm gonna take my 
pigtail out as well. And we're going to clean that because, yeah, your PSI should always be near zero. If the steam pressure gets too high, that pressure show is going to turn the buller off. And right now it may start, but it's probably not going to stay on long enough to heat the house. If this pig toe is clogged up and this pressure tool can't sense proper steam pressure in the boiler. But yeah, let me do this. Let me take this out. I'll see you all in a little bit. All right, guys. I got my pressure tool off. And the good thing about these Wall McLean steam boilers, they make their pressure tools physically smaller. So it's a lot easier to remove these without breaking them by hitting them against the boiler. Guys, with those crown pressure tools, you guys seen those before in my previous shorts. They're so big that even if you try to remove it, it could snap because they don't give you enough space to service it. That's why a lot of times with those crown pigtails, you'll see people put an extension nipple coming off the boiler. Not too far, but at least that far out. So with those bigger pressure trolls, you can easily unscrew them and get them out the way. But... And be careful when you remove these pressure trolls and pigtails you want to use a good pair of channel locks but don't go too crazy you don't want to strip the threads or break the the gauge and a little bit of water might come out and i use my pipe wrench and like i said i just use my pipe wrench here and just quarter turn to the left and it just came right out once again you don't want to go too crazy unscrewing these things and you don't want to go too crazy over tightening these things because god forbid if this thing snaps in the boiler that is going to be a bad day so now we got our sight glass and our pigtail out i got to run this under some water and make sure that water goes in one end and out the other if not then i got to get a brush and clean this pigtail and also with that sight glass i got to get some paper towels out the truck and i'll clean that I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. All right, guys. See that? You want to run this until clear water comes out the other side. And what can happen is the gunk can build up. You'll be surprised it doesn't take much gunk and build up for this pigtail to clog up. And any obstruction in the pigtail is gonna cause your pressure tool not to correctly sense adequate steam pressure in the boiler, so. All right, guys, this looks good. Now we gotta clean our side glass. All right, side glass is clean. And if you know, you know with that thermostat. And yeah, just to give you guys some context here. We, this is our first time servicing this boiler. I actually don't know if we did any work here prior to putting this mini split unit in, but yeah, she has a Nest thermostat. And since there's no dedicated common on this boiler, that thermostat loses its charge. So she has to use the USB port to recharge the thermostat. But I got everything clean. I gotta get some Teflon tape too for my pressure troll and my pigtail. I'm gonna go back to the truck and get that. And yeah, if you take your time, it comes out right every single time. You just want to try your best not to get too quick and break something. That's for sure. But let me go to the truck real quick. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I actually tried putting the sight glass in and the rubbers are chewed up you see that now this can definitely cause a leak in the sight glass which probably explains that little discoloration that you see on the bottom 
So always being prepared. We got our new gaskets and our brass bolts here. We're gonna put this on the top and the bottom. And let's put this eye glass in. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. I got everything connected. And right now, I turned the switch on. And as expected, right now, I don't have the thermostat calling, by the way, either. That thermostat is still upstairs charging up. But as expected, a little bit of car off is on. And this thing is filling up right now. And as you can see, that's a 90 day difference. All that gunk that was on the, on the bottom of that side glass. It definitely looks a lot cleaner. Make sure both handles are on. Yep, there it is. Now, I'm just, technically I'm leak checking my, my brass nuts here on the bottom and the top, but I didn't go too crazy with it, but I feel, I feel like I put enough of a turn on it that it won't leak, but I just like to double check and triple check, especially with the bottom one. Once this thing gets three quarters full, I want to turn the buller on as well to make sure that everything fires up, but, and by the way, I already cleaned the burners too when I went out and, and cleaned the sight glass and the pigtail. I just wiped the burners down. And this is spark ignition, so there is no standing pilot or nothing like that, no thermocouple, nothing like that to take a look at. But right now, My low with a cutoff is still on. My automatic feeder turned on for a little bit, but guys, I took out a lot of water. It was like at least four or five buckets full. But remember, before the sight glass, well, before the boiler fills up, the return has to be filled up first since the return technically is lower. So, and you see that there? Eventually, my light is going to turn off. But remember, I want to get this close to three quarters as possible. Now my light just turned off and my load would cut off. I'm still gonna fill it up until I get to that desired three quarter level. And no leaks, which is good. Now guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this to three quarters full and I'm gonna go upstairs and turn that thermostat on. Let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, we're waiting for this thing to reboot and we're gonna start this system up. Here we go. It's already at 78, I'm gonna turn this to 79. And if we go downstairs. Our burners should be on. And I hear it. Alright guys, bowler started up. Sight glass is clean and filled up. Pigtail. It's cleared out and also we got our new brass bolts and washers on that sight glass and now we just wait for everything to heat up and we are going to rock out but we'll be back out here next spring 
to do the maintenance on these bad boys here. Like I said, the filters, it looks like one just turned on. Like I said, the filters, all five indoor heads, everything is still clean. So we didn't expect much wear and tear, at least for the first year, but this customer is getting work done to the house. So all that drywall and dust particles, we definitely want to make sure that we keep those minutes for the units as clean as possible. But yeah, guys, there you have it. Steam boiler maintenance. I'm going to rock out and pack up. And I got to wait for the pipes to heat up. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Hold on, guys. Wait a minute. Upon further investigation, now see why my thermostat was losing power. Guys, I traced the wires back and I did find the transformer on the ceiling right on top of the boiler. Guys, that fan center will provide a dedicated comment to the thermostat. But looking at that fan center, I did find one of the L2 wires coming from the primary side of the fan center transformer. I found that wire loose, so I reconnected it, turned the power back on, and now my thermostat knowledge is the common. Cool. EGPZ, baby. I'll see you all in the next one.